Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the Heavy Metal Gamer Show podcast. It's great to be doing another podcast. I hope you enjoyed episode 8.5 a little while back. It was a lot of fun to do. As you all know, this is a big podcast, as there's going to be a huge Q&A segment that I'm very excited to do because there's some great questions and some ridiculous questions. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. So before I start on the questions, I want to thank everyone that submitted a question or three questions for this podcast. I think this is going to be way better than the first one, and that was a lot of fun to do. So we're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into the questions. First question from Mars93 on Twitter. How does it feel to walk on Greg's shells? Greg's shells. <laughs> Stupidest question you've ever asked, Mars. Uh, I'm not walking on Greg's shells. His second question. Do you tip... <laughs> do you tip your fedora? First of all, I don't have a fedora. And secondly, I'm not 22. Mars's third question. Do you like cumsies? <laughs> Cumsies? No, I don't like them, but I know you do. All right, so those are three questions from Mars93. What a way to start this show out. All right, 666Satan666 has two questions. His first question is, do you bow to Satan? Uh, no, I don't. Favorite black metal band and an album from that band? Well, it's pretty hard to have one favorite black metal band. Because the genre is fucking amazing. But if I had to choose, it'd probably be Venom. And really, that's a tough one to come up with one album. Because Welcome to Hell and Black Metal are two classic albums. At War with Satan is pretty damn good. And even their latest one, From the Very Depths, is amazing. So I can't really pick one. I'll go with those three. Because, you know what? Fuck it. I can break the rules. All right, so there's three questions from Kyle. Now, I know who Kyle is, so these should be good questions. His first question is, what Big Four Thrash band shouldn't be in there? Who should replace them? All right, so this is kind of a topic that gets thrown around a lot. And back in the day, the Big Four was a great group of thrash metal. Of course, you fast forward to today, they're not so great. If one band shouldn't be in there... It'd be Anthrax. Now, this is no hate to Anthrax, because I think they're a great band. But, to me, they were never really thrash. They had a thrash vibe to them, but I think Overkill should have been in the big four of thrash. I think, musically, they're a better band than Anthrax. They're more thrash than Anthrax, and that's who should have been in there. I'm opening something to drink while I record this. <laughs> I have to take a drink sometimes. Ah, that's good stuff, too. All right, his second question. Favorite metal band from Germany? That's a tough one because there are some great German metal bands. I'm going to probably go with Accept. But, of course, if you want to look at other classic metal bands, there's the Scorpions. Both bands are really fucking amazing. They have a nice discography full of classic songs, ranging from some that are popular to some that are not popular. Both have members that are very talented, ranging from drums, guitars, bass, to vocals. Once again, it's really tough to pick one. So I'm going to pick those two. Of course, there are many other bands from Germany that are amazing as well. And no, Rammstein isn't one of them. Favorite simulation games? Do I have to name them all because we'll be here for an hour? I like the simulation genre, not simulators. I think there's a slight difference between simulation and simulators. But they do go hand-in-hand hand at some point. Now, simulation games to me would be stuff like SimCity and SimCity 2000, SimCity 3000, SimCity 4, SimTown, SimAmped, SimIsle, uh. SimGolf. The Sims are a simulation game. SimTower. I could go on and on and on. And all of those that I mentioned are really badass games. And then there is stuff like Roller Coaster Tycoon, Zoo Tycoon, pretty much your tycoon games. Those are fun as well. But then you have simulators, and you have different genres of simulators. You have your goofy ones like Goat Simulator, I Am Bread, and all of that. And then you have racing simulators like the Gran Turismo series, Forza, R Factor, and even iRacing. And those are a lot of fun, too. So this time around, you actually asked me favorite simulation games and not just one. Those are just some of many that I like. 
I should do more reviews on simulation games, but I like to spread them out. Like, I've already done SimCity. Eventually, I'll do SimCity 2000. I want to do some on The Sims and all of that. And even some goofy-ass videos with The Sims. All right, Smiley Suck on Twitter. These ones are going to be great. His first question, how big is Batista's dick? Um, I personally don't know, but I'm sure you already know. His second question, do you look 22 today? No, I don't. I actually look 19. Stupid bastard. His third question, why is Paul London the greatest wrestler of all time? All right, first of all, Paul London sucks dick. Paul London was garbage. Greatest wrestler of all time is Vader and La Parca. And then next in line, Doink the Clown. Evil Doink, obviously, was the best out of all of the Doinks. And then after that, you have the Legion of Doom, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and then the Ultimate Warrior. But Paul London's trash, and you just want to suck Paul London's dick. All right, next questions from Saika. If, not saying you would, if you went to an anime convention, what character would you cosplay? Uh, if I had the right looks, probably Golago 13, because that's the only anime worth a shit. Saika's second question, do you know the full story about Fuda Fred, and why doesn't he admit it? Yes, I do know the full story of Fuda Fred. It was because of Mr. Medeker on the 100th episode of the Sons of Kojima podcast, where somebody asked the question, does Fred like Fuda? And everybody laughed about it, and that's how that started. That's from what I remember. And why doesn't he admit it? It's because he's scared to admit he likes Fuda. Psyche's third question. If Sammy Samosa loves DSP so much, why is he not cheering when he streams? Is there a war going on with Sammy and BSV? Are they the same person? Or does BSV give better blowies than Sammy? <laughs> well, I don't think Sammy actually watches the streams. I think he's working, doing the juice job or whatever he's doing at Whole Foods. Um, is there a war going on between Sammy and BSV? Possibly, behind the scenes. Are they the same person? I doubt it. I don't think Sammy is a psychopath like BSV. And does BSV give better blowies than Sammy? You'll have to ask Phil on that. He would know. Black Metal Gods on YouTube has a few questions. Three questions, actually. These should be pretty fun to answer. What are some of the worst bands you've ever listened to besides Nickelback? Well, does this count any genre of music? If so, probably pop music in general, rap music, pop country, R&B. But if you want to go with rock and metal, Linkin Park, Avenged Sevenfold. Um, I could go on and on and on here about this. Those are just some of the worst. There's a lot of deathcore bands or emo screamo bands trying to be metal that are just embarrassing. Also, there's that band. Remember, they did a video. They were a bunch of stupid kids. They were all emo-looking kids. And it's like a mixture of rap and metalcore together. And it sounds like shit. I can't remember their name. But it was on YouTube and people made memes about it. And it's just, ugh. It's so annoying, and there's a girl in the band, and every time she sings, I cringe so hard because it's fucking awful. I really can't think of any more than that, though. I mean, I'm not huge on grunge. I like a few bands, like Soundgarden, Alice in Chains. The Melvins were kind of grunge, although they're kind of a mixture of anything in general. There's just too many to name, I guess, and I'm pretty picky with metal. I guess I could throw Hell Yeah in there. I'm not big on Hell Yeah. I mean, when their first album came out, there was a few good songs on there, but after that, they just... Ugh. Trash. Uh. There's a burp for you during the podcast. It's all the Sprite over here off to my left side. All right, next question from Black Metal Gods. What are some of your favorite YouTube channels to watch, not specifically gaming? Well, I'm sitting here in front of my computer right now recording this, obviously. Let me take a look at my YouTube section here. There's quite a few channels I do watch. What the fuck is this? Oh, stop the presses. I got a comment. <laughs> oh, that's a funny comment. All right, so let me go to my channel here. Oh, shit, this is horrible to do in a podcast. This is not professional. It's just shooting the shit, and it's a podcast. Anybody that says, oh, that's not a real podcast can eat my ass. All right, so I got a kick-ass channel section. And granted, it's kind of hard to watch channels all the time. Let's make that clear. There's just not enough hours in the day, and when you're doing your own content, it's hard to watch everybody. But you have people like Rewind Mike and RGT85, Xander Scullion, uh, The Game Machine, Brazzle the Gamer, Black Metal Gamer, uh, Replayability, Kid Shoryuken, 
BioPhoenix, VG Dad, Lazy Game Reviews. Granted, these are all gaming channels, but that's pretty much all I watch. Uh, there's Dano OCT, which talks about computer viruses and worms and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, Nasty Metal Productions, he does talk about heavy metal, but I think he does do some gaming stuff. Um, let's see here. Rerez, Power Metal Gamer, Underground Revolution, Gamester81, Defunct Games... And obviously there's the Sons of Kojima. I watch the live streams if I miss them or watch whatever This Is How You Don't Play They Do. Uh, Jerps93 is another one. Punk Nostalgia Gamer is another one. He's got some great videos. Matter of fact, he did a video not too long ago. Awkward Situation, where he's seen some woman pissing in the park. And he actually titled it Golden Showers, May Flowers, Awkward Situation Vlog. It's actually a pretty funny video, pretty awkward story. But I've seen some weird things happen. I've talked about that before. Remember the whole tampon thing? Ugh. Let's see who else. Larry Bundy Jr. is another one I like to watch. He does some great videos. There's just so many of them. I'd be here for hours just naming off channels. But those are just some of my favorites. All right, so Black Metal God's third question is, what is the most frustrating game you've ever played but also really liked it at the same time, besides Dark Souls? Well, let's see. God, that's a tough one. No pun intended, because there's quite a few. Ikaruga is one of them. I love bullet hell shooters and shoot 'em ups and that game is balls-to-the-wall tough. That's a game I really enjoy. I know this might sound ridiculous as fuck, but I thought I Want to Be the Guy was fun, especially if you can get far in the game because it's so damn impossible. Those are just a few of probably many. Turrican is another good one. It's just really fucking tough. I did a review of that, obviously, and got my ass handed to me. And then there's the Soul series, obviously. But, uh, yeah, there's probably some other ones. Those are just ones that come to my mind. Kirby6948 on YouTube has three questions, and these are just ridiculous, but hey, what the hell. His first question, where can I find the best Fuda slash Trap Hente? Hente. Hente. You mean hentai? You have to ask Fuda Fred. He probably knows. You know where to get a hold of him. When are you going to do the Love Live School Idol Festival review? I swear to God, you're really smiley, just under a different name. Because he's asked me that a handful of times, too. Kirby's third question, who is the best MILF you plowed in the shitter? <laughs> Your mother. <laughs> Smiley's mom, too. And Mars. All three of your mothers at the same time. <laughs> Douchebag. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Let's get back to some serious questions here. All right. So Death Walking Terror, which is a really good Cannibal Corpse song, has two questions. And his first question is, favorite metal-themed video game? Well, that's a tough one because there's some really good ones out there. Obviously, I think Doom fits that category. Brutal Legend is pretty damn good. I'd almost say maybe Killing Floor could fit that mold because it's so gruesome. And shit, you could probably make some great heavy metal songs out of the game. Of course, there's the Iron Maiden video games. Those are pretty fun. I know I'm missing some others, but those are just a handful of them I can come up with. All right, so Death Walking Terror's second question is, favorite car combat game? Carmageddon. I love the series, other than... The shitty Nintendo 64 and Game Boy Color ports. And the PS1 version is not bad, but it's not good. And a lot of people shit on Carmageddon TDR 2000, but I don't think it's that bad of a game, like some out there will say. But Carmageddon, Carmageddon 2, Carmageddon Reincarnation slash Max Damage is fucking amazing. I love playing them, and it's just so addicting to play. I can't wait to get around to reviewing the later Carmageddon games. I hope there's a new one in the works later on. It's just so badass. And that's why it's my favorite car combat series. Now, my favorite out of the series so far, I'd probably say Carmageddon 2. It just still holds up to this day to me, gameplay-wise. Graphically, not so much. And I reviewed it, obviously, but I just love playing it. But Carmageddon Reincarnation slash Max Damage is still pretty damn fun to play. And, of course, the original, which I've streamed before and so on, that's a lot of fun, too. Uh... The Game Machine, Adam, on YouTube, which is another YouTube channel I like to watch, has one question. Can you make your penis touch your forehead? <laughs> I don't know. I never tried. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Brian66x has two questions. 
And his first one is, I know you mentioned you like very few new metal bands. What ones do you like? Well, this could cause a garbage fire, but I like Slipknot. And granted, I'm not huge on Slipknot, but I do like the band. More so their older stuff than the newer stuff, but there was a few songs that were on some later albums I thought were great. The stuff on Iowa and Volume 4, whatever it is, Subliminal Verses, that was good. Their live 9.0 CD is really, really good. For what it is, I think they're great. Another band, Mudvayne, and more so their early stuff, ranging all the way up to LD50. After that, they kind of got whiny, and there was a few decent songs in there, but other than that... Those are the only two that I can come up with. I'm not big on System of a Down. Disturbed is okay. There's a few decent songs there. Godsmack, I can't stand. Static X, I thought was garbage. And I know there's a bunch more in there. Hell, some people label Soulfly as new metal, and really Soulfly only had one good song, and that was Frontlines. And Brian's second question, do you like the core genres? The only core genre I like is Grindcore. I am not big on metalcore. I am not big on deathcore. I don't like mallcore. I despise mathcore. And some even call it emo core. I'm not big on that. As for hardcore, maybe some early hardcore that has a punk slash thrash vibe to it. But other than that, the hardcore genre with bands like Hatebreed and stuff like that just reminds me of tough guy music. Something that UFC fans would listen to and act tough when they're listening to it. To me, it's ridiculous. Daniel Sudgeton on Facebook has one question for me. When you become a gamer... Well, obviously I have the series Heavy Metal Gamer Origins where I talk about that. But gaming for me started way back when I was about three years old. Granted, I wasn't very good at it, but that was kind of the beginning. And of course, later on, I got my NES and all of that. And here I am today doing YouTube videos talking about video games. So yeah, it's kind of simple, I guess you can say. It's not mind-blowing. But yeah, that's how I became a gamer. And really, it's thanks to some family cousins and stuff like that. I got to watch them play, and then that kind of got me hooked. Metal Replay Gaming on YouTube has two questions, and his first question is, what is your favorite games? Well, I'll be here all day listing games. Obviously, I mentioned Carmageddon and Carmageddon 2, uh, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario World, Sonic, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, SimCity 2000, Earthworm Jim, Dark Souls, Manhunt, Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto 2, Grand Theft Auto 3, and pretty much a ton more. A long time ago, I was kind of closed-minded with gaming. Before I started doing YouTube, I was big into first-person shooters, racing games, sports, simulation, action games, and then platformers and even shoot 'em ups Now I will give any game a chance, for the most part. And there's just so many games I really enjoy playing, ranging from retro games to indie games, modern games, and so on. Yes, I do rant a lot on social media about some games and what some companies are doing, but I will give their game a chance. And the good thing about that, I don't have to buy some of these games. Either there's a demo out there, or I got friends that will buy these games brand new. So I'll get to try them then. And if the game interests me, maybe I'll buy it. Maybe I'll wait for a price drop. It all depends on the game. Metal Replay Gaming's second question is, what is your favorite albums? That's another question I could sit here and go on and on and on about, but I'll just name a handful of them. Obviously, I mentioned Welcome to Hell, Black Metal, which are two amazing Venom albums. Their latest album, From the Very Depths, was pretty damn good. Obviously, there's Merciful Fate, Don't Break the Oath, Melissa. Then there's the King Diamond stuff with House of God. That album is fucking amazing. Motorhead, there's so many great Motorhead albums. There is not a shitty Motorhead album. There's some that are better than others, and there's some that are not as amazing, but there's not one shit Motorhead album. Early Sepultura stuff is really good. Uh, Saxon, for the most part, has released some great stuff, except another band that has a pretty damn good discography. There's a couple duds in there. Judas Priest has had some great stuff from Painkiller, Screaming for Vengeance, Stained Class, Angel of Retribution was pretty damn good. Defenders of the Faith was great, but they've had some duds here and there. Iron Maiden, by far my favorite album from them is Power Slave, and then probably Killers. Then I'd probably have to say Brave New World. 
Death, I'd probably say Spiritual Healing and Scream Bloody Gore are two of my favorites, but that's another band that's never had a shitty discography. Even though they have two full albums, but a handful of demos, Hell has released some great stuff on both albums. Metal Church, obviously the early stuff with the first album, The Dark, and then there's the stuff with Mike Howe. That is damn good. Blessing in Disguise is good. And even their latest album was really, really good, and I can't wait for whatever else they decide to release after that. Matter of fact, I should pick up that live CD. I think it's called Classics Live, but it's stuff that was recorded from recent shows with Mike Howe singing classic metal church, ranging from the David Wayne stuff to the stuff when he was in the band back in the day. If you want to go with rock, obviously ACDC, I'd probably say Powerage, then Highway to Hell. After that, probably for those about to rock, then Back in Black. Guns N' Roses, a lot of people say Appetite for Destruction, and I think that's probably their best album, but I didn't mind the Use Your Illusions albums, that double album or whatever the hell you want to call it. I thought that was pretty good. Then there's bands like Kiss, obviously Creatures of the Night and Psycho Circus are my favorites, and even Carnival of Souls, which kind of had a grunge vibe to it, but to me it felt more like a darker metal sound to them than grunge. If you want to talk Danzig, hell, the first three Danzig albums are really fucking good. And I'd even say it's the best of his discography. Those are just some that I can come up with off the top of my head right now. I'm obviously not looking around. I could sit here and look around, but, you know, I'm doing a podcast and all of that. So, you know, at a later time, I want to review some albums and some non-mainstream metal that's really fucking good that, as far as I'm concerned, should have a spotlight on it because it's just kick-ass stuff. Nicholas Kennedy on YouTube has a question. How many knuckles are in a knuckle sandwich? I don't know what to say to that. What, you want to find out, motherfucker? (laughs) All right, Rob has three questions, and his first question is, do you like linear or open world games? I like both, but I'm more into the open world, let's look around, see what we can find type games. But it all depends on the game, it all depends on the genre. Some first-person shooters being a bit linear is a good thing. Then there's times I like open world games where I can go out and explore the world. Then there's games like Wasted, that is a post-apocalyptic pub crawler, or I guess you could say dungeon crawler, that has a vibe of the later Fallout games mixed with Borderlands, and it's pretty linear, and I like that. It's a lot of fun to play. It just all depends on the game, it all depends on how well it's made, so I can't really pick what I like more. I mean, I also like Grand Theft Auto and Saints Row, and those are very open. So if you ask me every week, depending on what I'm playing, that might change a little bit. But both are really good, if done right. His second question is, favorite Metallica album out of the first four? I'd have to say Injustice for All. Nothing against Master of Puppets, Kill Em All, and Ride the Lightning. But Injustice for All was heavier. The guitar work is so much better. The songs lyrically are really good. It's just a damn good album. The only thing that sucks, the whole deal with the bass. Other than that, a badass thrash metal album. Rob's third question, thoughts on Guns N' Roses and Axl Rose singing for ACDC. I might get shit for this, but I like Guns N' Roses. It's one of those bands I kind of grew up with. Not during the time, because I wasn't even around then, but it's what my parents listened to. When I was younger, I had a cassette of Appetite for Destruction that I'd listen to on my little Walkman. And then later on, when I got a CD player, I ended up getting the CD. I think for a hard rock band, Guns N' Roses kicks a lot of ass. My thoughts on Axl Rose singing for ACDC? I think it's great. I think he did a great job. He sounds good. He showed up on time. He's got a whole new outlook on life, and I like that. Granted, you know, the badass side of him when he was younger, I kind of thought that was cool, but he did act like a whiny bitch at times, too. But other than that, I'm glad Guns N' Roses is somewhat back together. I think they're doing great. Obviously, a lot of money was put on the table, but I also think a friendship has been rekindled there. You can tell that they're actually having fun and not, oh, we're doing this for money. And the whole deal with ACDC, I think, is great, too. But I think Brian Johnson might end up coming back to ACDC. This is just my thoughts on it, but I think he will be coming back. Because he did a show not too long ago, and he only did one or two songs with a handful of other musicians. I want to say Paul Rogers of Bad Company and whatever band he's in at this time. He was there. Robert Plant, I think, was there as well. And they sung a few songs. And he sounded good. He looked like he lost weight. And hopefully he's doing some procedures for his ear. I know there was that guy that was trying to get in touch with him about that thing you could put in your ear so it keeps you protected. So hopefully he can come back and kick some more ass on stage with Angus and the rest of the boys and just have fun for a couple more years and then call it a career. 
Silver Music Box on YouTube has three questions. His first one is, do you have a favorite cover song done in the style of metal? Well, quite a few, actually. If you want to go with any type of song that is done in metal, Wasp did a great job on I Don't Need No Doctor. Uh, they also did a great cover of When the Levee Breaks by Led Zeppelin. And then they did a good one of Easy Living by Uriah Heep. Obviously, Judas Priest did a badass job with Diamonds and Rust. And there's actually two different versions of the song. Not studio, but live. One where it's slow all the way through, an acoustic. And then obviously there's the one where it's heavier all the way through. And then when I seen Judas Priest during the Epitaph tour, one of the coolest things is they started out slow and then halfway through the song, they sped it up. And that was fucking amazing. That crowd went fucking ape shit. And they knew it was going to happen. I mean, this was halfway through the tour, if I recall. Kind of gave you chills, too. It was really fucking awesome. I would love to see Judas Priest again. That was a badass show. By far, probably my favorite metal show. And I've seen some great ones. I haven't seen a lot of them, but I've seen some classic bands. And that's the really cool thing. And I hate to go off topic here, but I want to just talk about that real quick. Some of the bands I have seen at my young age. ACDC, KISS, Aerosmith, Cheap Trick. Those are four classic rock bands, or hard rock bands, that have a huge legacy behind them. When it comes to metal, I've seen Queensryche before Jeff Tate was kicked from the band. I've seen Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and Metal Church, which all of those bands have a legacy behind them. But to see Judas Priest and Iron Maiden, granted not in their prime, but even to this day they are a popular heavy metal band, it's pretty fucking cool. And there's times I sit there and think about that. I sit there and think, man, I've seen Judas Priest and Iron Maiden. And I kind of get a smile on my face. And then I think back to those concerts. And it kind of hits you a little bit. It's just like, whoa. And then I think of the three times I've seen ACDC. A band that pretty much started it all for me. For hard rock and heavy metal. And with the talks of retirement and how the band was pretty much going to go away, that kind of hurts. But I understand at the same time. And personally, I do want to see the lineup with Axl Rose on vocals. I think that'd be pretty cool. Unfortunately, I wasn't around to see Bon Scott. I think that would have been pretty legendary to see. But yeah, I'm off topic here. And when it comes to cover songs, man, there's so many. Metallica, I think, did a great job when they did a lot of cover songs for the Garage Inc. album. I really like their Merciful Fate medley. There's actually a cover that I really fucking like by Bruce Dickinson. It wasn't when he was with Maiden, and some say it was with Dream Theater, but I think that's wrong. He did a cover of Perfect Strangers by Deep Purple. That one's pretty badass. You can find it on YouTube, which is very well done. And that's a classic song in general. Of course, his cover of The Zoo I thought was enjoyable. And that was done for ECW. I think it was done on the ECW album. I can't remember who used the theme song, but I thought it was a pretty good cover. Once again, I could probably sit here for hours and talk about songs, but uh, I don't want to make this a 10-hour podcast. I want to kind of keep it between two and five hours if we go that long. Silver Music Box's second question. Is there a metal band you like that has a female lead singer? Not Arch Enemy, that's for sure. Yeah, there's actually a few. And there's some great Japanese metal bands that have female vocalists as well. But if you want to keep it just in general, Holy Moses is a great band. Sabina Klassen is a great thrash metal vocalist. Doro is a great vocalist, especially the stuff she did in Warlock. There's just a few that I can come up with off the top of my head at this time. And finally, Silver Music Box's third question, what is your favorite shoot 'em up uh, Sinistar. And I could probably throw in Galaga. Yes, they're two classics. Yes, they're before my time, but I just love playing them. Granted, they're simple. They're not bullet hell shooters, but I just fucking love playing them. Tony Stanford on YouTube asks, Do you like Wasp? And if so, what are your top three albums of theirs? Well, Tony, thanks a lot. You just made this a six-hour podcast just on this topic alone. No, I fucking love Wasp. By far one of my favorite metal bands. My favorite album, obviously, is The Crimson Idol. There's something about that album that every time I listen to it, I get interested by the story. It's a dark, sad, emotional story, but at the same time, in a fucked up way, it's kind of beautiful. And I know that sounds stupid as fuck, but you have to listen to the album. You have to listen to the story behind it. And for some reason... I don't want to bring this up, but obviously there's a question later. When I heard about Chris Cornell passing away, and I heard how he did it, and obviously he played a show that night, it kind of took me back to the whole Crimson Idol story. During the last song, The Great Misconceptions of Me, there's just something about that ending that it almost haunts you. 
There's a line in the song that says, With these six strings, I make a noose. To take my life, it's time to choose. The headlines read, Of my demise, of my suicide. That's the first thing that came to mind. Granted, the way it's done in the story, obviously he does it on stage. That's not what Chris Cornell did. But he did play a show that night. And a few days after his passing, I kind of wanted to express that, but I didn't know what way I could. Granted, we know he had battles with depression in the past, and I don't know how his childhood was compared to this story, but it just kind of knocked me back for a minute, hearing, unfortunately, how he passed away to this story right here. But this album, in general, is just fucking amazing. It's probably my favorite concept album, and that beats out House of God by King Diamond. But this here is more realistic. If you haven't heard it, go listen to it. It's on YouTube. You can listen to the whole damn thing. Now, that's not just my favorite album from Wasp. Obviously, their self-titled debut full album is pretty damn good. The Last Command is fucking awesome. Inside the Electric Circus, The Headless Children. Still Not Black Enough was pretty damn good, and that was after The Crimson Idol. I didn't care too much for Kill, Fuck, Die, or KFD. Um, Hell Dorado's a great one. There's just so many great Wasp albums, and even the last one they did, Golgotha. I thought it was good. Granted, Wasp is not raw like they used to be. They've kind of turned into a Christian metal band a little bit. But I still respect Blackie Lawless. The guy can still fucking sing. And like I said in my Metal World Order video, I would love to see Blackie and Chris put the past behind them and release some new music together. But realistically, that is never going to happen. And that sucks. But you know what? Chris is doing his own thing, and I think he's doing a great job. Very good question, Tony. I probably could go more and more and more about Wasp. But unfortunately, I can't do that. I don't want to be here for six, seven hours. His second question, though, is... If Kim Kardashian and you were in a helicopter and she fell out and she raised her hand for you to help her back in, what sandwich would you make? Probably a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. Or a pulled pork sandwich. Because that sounds really good right now. BioPhoenix from YouTube has two questions. His first question is, What is your thoughts on what's happening currently in the retro gaming market? A lot of bullshit. Let's just be fair here. I get it. Retro games could be a little pricey. Everything's a little pricey. But some of these prices are fucking ridiculous. There's no way I'm gonna pay three, four, five, six hundred dollars for a game, or even a thousand, or two thousand, or whatever. The way I look at it, I'll emulate. I'm not afraid to say that. There was a time in the past I kind of was afraid to say that, but anymore I'm not. Obviously, I praise emulation a lot in my videos. I'll just go that route rather than paying a hundred, two hundred, three hundred bucks for a game, unless it's gonna cook me dinner and suck my dick. I don't want it. No reason to have it. I could take, let's say, $150 and go buy games that are cheaper and that are probably better. As for the way GameStop handles it, I think it's bullshit. It's no secret that I think GameStop is a pile of shit. Uh, as for people that are resellers, they're trash. It's just a fad that I wish would end, but unfortunately it's not going to end, so you got to have to deal with it, I guess. His second question is, when you get a PS4, what are some games you wish to have or play on it? Bloodborne is one of them. I fucking love playing that game at a friend's house. That's one of them. That's probably it. Pretty much everything else is on multiple consoles and PC. I'm sure there's something else in there. But at this time, I don't know why I can't think about it. I'm just sitting here relaxing. Yes, I'm in front of my computer, but I'm just relaxing doing this. It's probably a bad time to record this podcast. Timonville on YouTube has two questions. What kind of women do you like? What's your type? Or you can just say you a fig. That okay, too. <laughs> God damn it, Timonville. <laughs> um, what type of women do I like? Uh, women with a good sense of humor. Women that are not easily offended. Women that can have a conversation and not make themselves look stupid. If you want to go with looks, well, someone that looks good. You know? Not some fucking 700-pound cow. Uh, dark brown hair. A nice ass, a big set of TFers. What more can you ask for? That's a stupid question, man. That's a stupid ass question. <laughs> uh, second question: What games you most looking for? Uh, there's a lot of indie games. Obviously, Cuphead is on there. Uh, Miami Shakedown, or whatever the hell it's called, the sequel to Retro City Rampage. Man, there's a lot of them. I do want to get a Nintendo Switch so I can play through Breath of the Wild. And then obviously, there's the new Mario game. 
there's a lot of games coming to PC that I can't wait to play, or that's even out on PC. Far Cry 5 I do have an interest in after seeing the trailer and hearing the little backstory of what the game's going to be about. I think that'll be fun. Red Dead Redemption 2, obviously, is another one. I'm very excited to get my hands on that. It looks fucking amazing. Yes, it's delayed, but I understand why it's delayed. So, yeah, those are some games I'm looking for. Hey, Mr. Wilson Plays on Facebook and YouTube has a few questions, has three questions, actually. If by some odd twist of fate you were given control of Capcom and had a year to turn things around, how would you do it? First of all, it would take longer than a year. But the first thing I would do is fire every dipshit that comes up with these dumbass ideas for the company and hire people that want to make Capcom good again. I want people that will not go with these ideas of milking Street Fighter 2 and releasing it at a bullshit price. I want people that will take something like Ghosts and Goblins and make a brand new game or a remaster slash HD remaster, whatever the hell you want to call it, or even a reboot. Obviously, when it comes to fighting games, a new Street Fighter would be made, but it would be done right, and it wouldn't cater to the fighting game community. It would cater to everyone, and it wouldn't be released 20% 20% done and a pile of shit just to cater to the fighting game community and all these fighting game tournament bullshit. It's no secret that I think that's a fucking cancer. Other than that, that's all I can think of at this time. Obviously, I would like to bring back some old franchises. There would be a new Mega Man and a good one at that. Hell, there'd probably be a few different types of Mega Man games. Maybe even a 3D one. There'd be a 3D Final Fight done right. There would also probably be something new, something fun, some new characters. There's quite a few ideas I have, but obviously I don't have the money to take over Capcom, so there's no chance I'd be doing it. His second question is, what do you think the turning point in gaming was? Well, there's actually quite a few. I think each era had a turning point. I think if you go back to the 8-bit era, you have a lot of classic games that were a huge turning point for gaming and made it popular, and it kind of just snowballed into 16-bit and more and more and more, and then now you look at it, it's such a popular form of entertainment out there, and you have so much variety of games out there that people accept it now. Granted, a lot of people say that's a bad thing because, oh, this person's not a real gamer, oh, this person's not a nerd, and I think to a point that's a load of bullshit. I think everybody that wants to play video games and isn't doing it to be attention whores or to make themselves look cool are more than welcome to play video games. When it comes to turning points, I'd say 3D graphics is a big one. Obviously, graphics are getting better and better through the years. Open world games, longer games. And let's say you look from the 70s to 2017, Gaming has changed so fucking much, and it's a huge turning point for entertainment. So there's quite a few different turning points in gaming. Now, his last question is, what do you think is GameStop's biggest flaws, and if given the opportunity, what would you do to fix them and make it into a more reputable business? I'd shut it down. GameStop is trash. It's why I don't buy from there. I'd rather support Walmart, Target, whatever, and of course local game stores, over GameStop. I've bought stuff from there and I wasn't happy about buying it there and of course it's been a long while but I doubt I ever will again unless I absolutely positively need a game and really there's other means to find it out there. GameStop is known to rip people off. They do it daily. I doubt it'll change and I doubt it could be changed. Substatic258 on YouTube has one question. Why do you still hate me? I'm fucking too lovable. I don't think I hate you at all. I used to not care for you, but I don't hate you. I don't know what the hell that even means. Is that a quote from something I don't know? Matt Extreme has three questions. His first one, favorite arena shooter. That's easy. Unreal Tournament. Although, Quake 3 is pretty fun. And there's Unreal Tournament 2004. Open Arena was pretty cool, too, for a free arena shooter. Technically, Team Fortress 2 is an arena shooter. There's that. But I would probably go with Unreal Tournament. It's a blast to play, no pun intended. If you can make a Duke Nukem game, how would you make it? Like Duke Nukem Forever, but more goofy jokes, loading times that are not as shitty, more levels, and just a lot of fun. I don't understand the hate for Duke Nukem Forever. I think it's a great game. Granted, the hype was a big thing. The hype was the issue. It got released, and it didn't hold up to the hype. 
from many years before. It sat in development hell, and I think that was a big issue. I think if it was released, or let's just say it wasn't brought into the picture until three years before it was actually released, we'd be singing a different tune. Remember that time you were drunk and thought about making your own game about turkey and ham? Um, I don't think that ever happened. I don't remember that ever happened. I did one time get drunk as hell, and I came up with the idea of a game called Super Demon Semen Shooters. And it would have been like Ghost and Goblins, but you are a demon shooting its own semen at nuns. And it would have like a cartoon style like a modern Ghost and Goblins game. I don't know, it just came to my mind one time. Nasty Metal Productions has three questions here. His first one. What do you think is the most overrated thrash metal album? Probably... I hate to say it, but probably Rain and Blood by Slayer. I love the album. Don't get me wrong. I think it's fucking great, but I think it's overrated. A lot of people put it too high on a pedestal. Granted, I can listen to it from front to back, no problem, but there's far better thrash metal albums out there. Also, I hate to say this, but I think Master of Puppets could go on that list too. And... Peace Sells is another album. I think Rust in Peace is a better Megadeth album, if you want to go with the big four, or those three of the big four. Yeah, but yeah, those are my picks. I know you just wanted one, but fuck it. Who were some of the most worst YouTubers besides DSP, Leafy is here, and Keemstar? Oh boy, you're going to get me in trouble. A lot of these social justice warrior channels are a real cancer. Lacey Green, regardless of her... Oh, I'm changing sides, bullshit. I think it's a load of shit for attention. That family that had those kids that ended up getting the kids taken away. What is it? Daddy 8 plus 8 or whatever it is. The one that did the pranks on the kids and they just took it way too far. That's a cancerous channel. And I did get into a few debates about that. I said it was ridiculous for people to give them any bit of attention. But it did help out in the end. But at the same time, they still got attention after that, which I think people should ignore the fuckers and let them rot on YouTube. Pieces of shit, that's what they are. There's some other channels, but I could sit here all day long and shit on them, but I won't. I'll be nice this time. Some of them, though, you'll probably know who they are. But if it's DSP, fuck that fat piece of shit. He's a cancer, too. I could go fucking rant about that idiot for a while. His third question is, what was the worst thing to have happen during the WWF slash WWE Attitude Era? Best thing to happen during the so-called Ruthless Aggression Era? Attitude Era, probably the death of Owen Hart. I think that affected a lot. Obviously, I'll never forget hearing about it. I heard about it the next day on the news. And I thought Owen Hart was cool as hell. Unfortunately, they had a stupid gimmick on him. And I think I was like 10 or 11 when that happened. I was just shocked. It's just a damn shame he's no longer here. By now, I'm sure he'd probably be retired. But who knows where his career would have led. I think he could have ended up getting out of that Blue Blazer gimmick and going back to his Owen Hart name and possibly some title runs because he was a great wrestler. And it sounds like backstage, everybody loved him. Which is funny, because he could play a heel really good. He definitely did a damn good job, because when I was younger, I fucking hated him. I hated his heel character. When it comes to the Ruthless Aggression era, man, that's a tough one. I mean, there's some good things. Obviously, when Brock Lesnar first came around, that was huge. I hate to say it, but John Cena was a huge part of that. Eddie Guerrero, his run was good. Evolution obviously is another thing that came and there was some great feuds there the whole thing with stone cold being a general manager was great that era went from 2002 up to 2008 so there was a lot of great things in there all right bastard bastard bastardian bastardian or bass Baster adrian i fucked up your name i'm sorry on youtube has three questions what do you think of the new Sonic game they announced where you can make your own personal furry character, Sonic Forces? I guess it's cool. I mean, it's a character creator. Of course, there's a lot of people that are going to use it and be like, Oh, look, I'm a Sonic character. And come here, Sonic. I want to have blowies with you. Um, other than that, I, I don't see an issue with it. I mean, character creators are kind of overused, but whatever, you know. Maybe I can make a Heavy Metal Gamer Sonic character. I actually drew one one time, and I think I put, like, a little caption that said, I want to kill myself, or I want to die, or something like that. It was pretty funny. 
His second question is, what kind of videos slash channels do you watch on YouTube? I kind of answered that already earlier. There's some gaming channels. There's some tech channels, like I mentioned with the whole viruses and worms thing. That's pretty much it. And of course, I do like to watch live concert footage from bands that I like. And there's some full concerts on there, too, which is pretty good. His final question, ever watched eSports and what do you think about that? I fucking hate it. I hate eSports. It's not a sport. It shouldn't even have the fucking sports name on it. Sitting down and playing a video game is not a sport. I hate to break that to you. I don't like competitive gaming. And when I mean competitive gaming, I mean these competitions out there where people have these egos, are arrogant, egotistical, and act like complete dipshits. Look at Dark Side Phil. He used to do fighting game competitions. And he's a big piece of shit with a fucking attitude. He's egotistical and arrogant. And on top of that, he's dumb as fuck. I don't mind competitions with friends, though, where you have a $50 bet or a $25 bet or $10 bet, and you're just playing and having fun and having laughs and maybe a little trash talking. But eSports, to me, I just wish it would go away. Unfortunately, it's not going away because it makes video game developers and publishers and all of that a lot of money. Brandon has three questions. His first question is, favorite fast food restaurant? If you want a chain restaurant, you know, a big name restaurant... I'd probably say Burger King or Taco Bell, maybe Pizza Hut, but I like local places more, and there's a few burger places, pizza places, and Mexican restaurants, Chinese restaurants that are here where I live that are just so much better, but granted, I don't think Mexican restaurants and Chinese restaurants are fast food, but there's a burger place about nine or ten blocks from where I live that is amazing. They make some of the best burgers I've ever ate, so that would probably be it. Brandon's second question, would you ever consider a food segment? A legit one? I don't know. I kind of have the HMG Tries It thing, which is a parody of DSP Tries It, and it's making fun of Dark Side Phil. I have a lot of fun doing that, but you never know. There might be a food segment here and there, but I'd just rather have fun making fun of Dark Side Phil because he's a fuckhead. Brandon's third question, Guar or Lordi? Guar. Any day, every day, any time of the day. Guar is such a better band. Don't get me wrong, I like Lord Eye, even though they get a lot of shit for being a Guar ripoff, but I think Guar is just so much better. They're ruthless, they're crude, and they're fun to listen to. And may Odorous Arungus rest in peace. Dinslav Menev on YouTube has three questions. His first question is, what are some of your favorite underrated or unknown metal and rock bands that you think people should give a listen to? Holy shit, you're going to have me here for a while. Obviously, the ones I've mentioned throughout this podcast are great bands. And I mentioned mostly a lot of popular bands. But if you want unknown or non-mainstream, there's so many. I've talked about them before on this channel. Um, Satan, Tank, Tankard, which are a great thrash metal band that talks about alcohol most of the time. Hell. Manila Road, which if you listen to the opener, the intro of the podcast, and obviously the outro, that's a Manila Road song. Omen, Heavy Load, Metal Lucifer, Sabbat, Sodom, even though they're not really underrated, uh, they're, they're just a great band to listen to. Slaughter, I'm not talking about the band with Mark Slaughter, there is a Canadian band that kicks a lot of ass with the same name. I could sit here and go on and on and on, but those are just a few. His second question is, what are your thoughts on current-gen consoles? I think there's good, and I think there's bad. There's a lot of great games that are coming out to these consoles, and then there's a lot of issues, too. I think that Sony and Microsoft making a new version of the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 is a bit ridiculous. Granted, I know they want to make them more powerful, but I think they could wait until next generation. But at the same time, I understand what they're doing. They're trying to make money, obviously. I think there's a lot of great things in the current gen for consoles, but I just wish they would stick to more gaming than entertainment in general. And I think that's an issue with Microsoft right now, where Sony and Nintendo are releasing games, they're worried about other stupid shit, like Netflix and all of that, when they should be releasing games. That should be their main focus. But other than that, I don't hate current gen of gaming. Who knows what's going to happen next gen, but I think we're going to be with these consoles for a little while, at least three to four more years, maybe a little longer. Dennis Lov's last question, which I think I've butchered your name. Do you plan on reviewing any horror slash survival horror games? Well, I've reviewed Outlast. I want to review Outlast too, but I want to review Outlast Whistleblower before that. So just a short and sweet answer, yes. 
there will be more horror and survival horror games at some time. The thing is, I like to spread things out. You've probably noticed that on this channel. I try to spread out what type of games I'm reviewing and so on. If you've noticed, one minute it'll be a NES game, and then maybe a PC game, and then a Super Nintendo game, and then maybe a Android game, and then back to PC, and then Sega Genesis, then PlayStation, and then back to the NES, and then Atari 2600, or whatever. I like to spread things out a bit, and I try to make it a variety of games. Granted, sometimes you might get a first-person shooter, first-person shooter, first-person shooter in a row, but I just want to spread things out. That's just how I like to run my channel. But yeah, there will be survival, horror, and horror games in general that we'll see more of. I just think you'll see them more in the fall slash winter months, mostly October, because that's around Halloween. Greedy Selfish 97 on YouTube has three questions. Any rap music you like? No. I mean, I don't hate the Beastie Boys, but I wasn't a huge fan of them. Then again, they kind of had a mixture of punk, rock, and rap mixed together. So I guess the Beastie Boys were all right. Other than that, I'm not huge on rap at all. Although one time somebody told me that I seem like the type of guy that would listen to DMX because of how aggressive I am and how aggressive he is. I had to laugh in their face because I don't like DMX. I think it's trash. Second question is, what are some of your favorite fighting game characters? That's a good question, actually. When it comes to the Street Fighter series, M. Bison is my favorite. I don't know if it's the game itself or the movie that makes me like M. Bison more than any other character. I think Raul Julia did a badass job as M. Bison, especially with his acting. But at the same time in the game, M. Bison's a badass. When it comes to Mortal Kombat... There's a lot of great characters, and I know this sounds generic as fuck, but Scorpion is probably my favorite. Although Shao Kahn, to me, is a badass. Granted, he's a pain in the ass in some of the games, but he just looks badass. Especially in the later Mortal Kombat games. Of course, I do like Sub-Zero and Reptile. I think Sector is pretty cool. When it comes to other Street Fighter characters, Blanca's cool. E Honda's pretty damn good, especially in Street Fighter 2. Guile is alright. I think he's a bit on the overrated side, though. If you want to go with the Marvel vs. Capcom games, even though I'm not huge on Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Firebrand, a.k.a. the Red Aremer, is pretty badass. That's one that I will pick all the time when I play that game. If you want to go with Killer Instinct, I always use Spinal. Actually, it was between Spinal, Saberwolf, and Sender. That is in the original Killer Instinct. I thought those were fucking badass characters. There's a lot of great fighting game characters out there. His final question is, if you had a metal band, what would you call it? Blood Demon. There's actually a story behind that. Me and some friends back in my late teens and early 20s had a jam band. Granted, we weren't very good, or at least I wasn't very good. I played drums, and I haven't played drums in a long time, so I'm probably dog shit and worse. But we had a lot of fun playing. And we called ourselves, kind of as a joke, Blood Demon. Now, we never played an official gig. It was just hanging out with friends and jamming. And I think one time we had 25 people because we were having a party, drinking, and all of that. We actually did try to take it a little bit serious at one point, and we recorded some stuff, but I can't find the recordings anywhere. And I think they're gone, so unfortunately, there is no Blood Demon music out there for you to listen to. But we had a lot of fun. It was good times. There was a little bit of drama, but after a while, we just had our fun and left it at that. Another name that I thought was pretty cool, and I'm sure it's been used, Hellrider or Hellion, even though that has been used, which another female vocalist right there. Anne Bullion, she's a damn good vocalist. Of course, I can't forget Leather Leone from Chastain. And, of course, she has her own solo stuff. Great vocalist. Man, I wish I would have remembered them earlier. It's kind of funny because I was listening to some Hellion earlier today. Very good stuff. But back to the question. Hellion is a pretty cool name for a metal band. I don't know. I think Blood Demon kind of sounds cool. It's just simple. So, I don't know. We were drunk when we came up with that name. Savage Animal. Savage Animal, man. If anybody gets that, you're cool. You're really badass. All right, next question. Crazy Viking Gamer has a question. Actually, he has three questions. What are your thoughts on the Uncharted series is his first question. I find it to be an overrated series, and I just can't get into them. I own the first and I think the third game, and 
I need to get back into playing them again and maybe give them a second. Actually, this would be the fifth chance. Maybe they'll warm up to me, but I just do not care too much for the Uncharted series. His second question, your thoughts on Soundgarden and Chris Cornell? Well, I talked about Chris Cornell earlier, and I think it's really sad what happened. Unfortunately, you know, we don't know what everybody's thinking. They might be good one minute, and then the next minute they're having a lot of issues in their life. I know it's been said that he was not sounding good when he was playing and was kind of out of it. And who knows what we're going to learn between now and the end of the year about this. But Chris Cornell was a hell of a vocalist. He was. He had a damn good voice. When it comes to Soundgarden, I think they're a great band. I think they're a damn good band, actually. I, I should rephrase myself there. They were a grunge band, but sounded like a metal band at the same time. If you listen to songs like Rusty Cage, Outshined, Black Hole Sun, they have a metal vibe to them. And that's what I really liked about Soundgarden. Granted, the later stuff I wasn't big on. When it comes to Audio Slave, I'm not huge on that band. There's a few decent songs. And I didn't like Chris Cornell's solo stuff, but I respect him as a vocalist, and I respect his legacy. It's just a damn shame that his life is cut short at 52 years old. But may he rest in peace, and my condolences to his family, his friends, his bandmates, and obviously to his huge fans, and his fans in general. Crazy Viking Gamer's last question is, do you have any plans for reviewing more RPGs? There's quite a few on the list. It's just, like I said, with the survival horror and the horror games, I spread them out. I like to put a lot of things here and there. I do change the list around. Eventually, there will be more RPGs. And that's another thing with RPGs, though. I've got to put a lot of time into them. If you follow me on Twitter, I talked about playing Fallout 4 on PC. I thought about doing a review of it, but... I think it's going to take longer than two or three days to play the game, and I need to just spend more time with it, like a week, maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks. That's why I don't understand how some of these reviewers release a review of the game three days after it's released, or even a day after it's released. Granted, they probably get a hold of it if they're a big enough reviewer, but even that, it would take me a month or two to actually give an honest review, or a lot of hours into it. I mean, look at Dark Souls. I put a shitload of hours in probably two weeks to do that review. So eventually, yes, there will be more RPGs. It's just one of those things that it's going to take a lot of time. Tristan the Pest on YouTube YouTube has one question. Why do you call it a podcast? Did the pod break its arm or something? Thanks, Chip. I really appreciate that question. And yes, it broke its fucking arm, you cocksucker. Piece of garbage. <laughs> Only a few people might get that, but that's okay. Just don't be like Mars up above and have an Uncle Paul. Huh? All right. Next question. There's three of them here. From Brooke the Evil Bitch. Oh, this should be great. Remember that time you were kicking ass in Unreal Tournament 2004 and the power went out and you just sat there, looked at the screen with a somewhat angry look on your face and then said, fuck Mother Nature and her stupid mouth, but you were calm saying it until you got to the word mouth and then you yelled it? Yes, I do remember that. And then I got up and opened a beer and just kind of relaxed a bit. I wasn't even like that mad. Granted, I was doing good and it sucked, but yeah, I wasn't really that mad. Favorite Grand Theft Auto characters, name five. Let's see. In no order, Tommy Versetti, Trevor, Colonel Cortez, Laszlo in Vice City, and the one hot dog guy from Grand Theft Auto 4. The one that's like, have a taste of my spicy chihuahua. That guy cracks me up. So yeah, there's five. Obviously, my favorites out of there is probably Tommy Versetti and Trevor Phillips. I think they're badass characters. Besides the voice actors that did them, fucking great at what they do, either acting or voiceover work. So the last question, if they made a Redneck Rampage reboot, what would you like to see? I'd like to see it more gruesome, maybe a little bit on the darker side, but I guess that's kind of what Far Cry 5 is running with. So I guess more goofiness, uh, violent, some great rockabilly or outlaw country for a soundtrack, and maybe make it open world to a point with some badass characters, some goofy voiceover work and so on. That would be really cool. Just a couple more questions here. Holy shit. This has been a lot of fun so far. I'm having a lot of fun. I don't know about you. The Roy Teal 96 on YouTube has three questions. And the first one is, if you could no longer listen to heavy metal, what genre of music would you listen to? So does that count heavy metal and hard rock? If so, I'd probably go with Outlaw Country. Stuff like Hank Williams and Waylon Jennings, Wayne Hancock, Reverend Horton Heat, 
Hank Williams the Third, David Allen Coe, stuff like that I'd listen to. That's great music, I think. Obviously, you're going to throw in Johnny Cash as well, and Merle Haggard, which made them two rest in peace. Just legendary country musicians. I bet a lot of you didn't know I listened to country music, but I do. Good country music, not this bullshit you listen to today. It's all trash. If you were stranded on an island, what console and three games would you take with you? I'd take my PC, because fuck this island. Taking my PC with an internet connection and two external hard drives full of games. <laughs> but... To answer the question fair, probably a Super Nintendo with Super Mario Kart, Super Mario World, and Mario RPG. I know that sounds weird, all those Mario games, but there's a lot of gameplay there. So yeah, those are the three I'd take. So the Roy Teal's final question is, what is the biggest problem plaguing the world today? The biggest problem? Wow. I think it's more than just one problem. That's a huge problem. Obviously, terrorism is one. I don't want to go political here, but politics would be another. There's a lot of things. And unfortunately, the world's a fucked up place right now. And it's sad. It's really sad to see this. And then there's people that defend this fucked up shit. There's people that defend these bombings. There's these social justice warrior fucking retards that think it's okay that some terrorists have a bomb go off at a concert. Because, oh, a bunch of sexist. Oh, a bunch of racist. Oh, Ariana Grande is a bitch. Come on now. It's fucking ridiculous. The world's a fucked up place. And there's just a lot of things plaguing it. I wish things would change, but I doubt that'll ever happen. That's all I can really say on this. Because then it would turn into political, and I don't really want to bring that to this channel. All right, so the final questions. And this one's from Bladesaw which I know who this is, why he picked the name Bladesaw is beyond me. I should kick him in the fucking nuts for coming up with that name. All right. Favorite Danzig album? Probably Danzig 2. Although the first three are just badass. And the new album is pretty fucking good, too. If you haven't got it, go pick it up if you're a fan of Danzig, that is. Second question. If you could make a video game that had a heavy metal theme, what would it be? Um... I think I talked about this before, but it'd be based off of the Judas Priest album, Painkiller, or possibly the Jugulator album from Judas Priest. I think that'd be pretty badass. Could be like a horror game. Of course, there's probably one I could do with Iron Maiden that would be better than Ed Hunter and obviously the mobile game. Some sort of like action shooter slash beat em up or something like that where you play as Eddie. That'd be pretty cool. Finally, the last question, do you think Richard Sherman sucks? No, I don't. I think Richard Sherman's a great player. Obviously, I'm a Seahawks fan, and I know there's Seahawks fans that don't like Richard Sherman, but I think he's great. Granted, his mouth kind of gets him in trouble, and I understand that to a point, but the guy is a hell of a player, and he does give back to the community. Unfortunately, who knows what's going to happen. There is a lot of hearsay going on, and there's a lot of bullshit out there from sports media. But in the end, I will always be a Richard Sherman fan, unless he does something really fucked up. But that could happen to any player. All right, so those are all the questions for this Q&A. Some of them did get answered pretty quickly. Some of them, I went off topic a little bit, but that was a lot of fun to do. Once again, thank you all for your questions. Later on, I might do like a Heavy Metal Gamer video blog Q&A where you can ask me one question and I'll do like a 20-minute video or something like that. I think that could be a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, thank you guys once again. There was a lot of people that did it. I think there was over 70 questions, so there's some good ones there. And if you missed out, like I said, there'll be more later on. I just like to spread them out a bit. I should just call my channel the spread out video game guy because I spread shit out so much. <laughs> All right, so I need to get something to drink. And I think I'll leave you with some music. How about a little bit of Gigi Allen? So here's a classic Gigi Allen, Laying Up With Linda. Laying Up With Linda Used to be fun Nobody ever paid the rent There was never anything done then One day I killed her Now I'm on the run But living with Linda Linda wasn't 
Nazareth night Or I was rock and roll until three We drank, we never saw the daylight That was the death of her and me Then one day I just got bored and killed her I got pissed and killed her So now I'm on the run But let me tell you, living with Linda I felt that <laughs> I felt that that would be perfect to come back to after that song <laughs> That was uh, Laying Up with Linda by G.G. Allen. As much as G.G. Allen was a piece of shit, as a person, he was very controversial and he pulled no punches. All right, so I'm not going to make this a real long segment. I actually feel another burp coming on, so we'll probably get that before the end. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. All right. <laughs> Once again, thank you guys for continuing to support this channel. Since I hit 3,000 subscribers, I can't believe how many new ones I've gained. It's just crazy. And I'm very grateful and happy for the numbers I get. So once again, thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for listening to this podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I think I need a nap. So I better go and quit babbling like a jackass over here. I'm just wasting time at this point. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourself and each other. You guys kick ass. Keep me tight.